Okay. Good afternoon. And I'm the closing act. I didn't know that beforehand. So Wouter says I got myself into this. Well, he really asked me to be here. But I'm uh, super excited. Um, I'm very passionate about the brand that I am working for. Um, and as a closing act, I'd better make it a good one. So I'm going to try and do my very best. Um, I'll be telling you today, first of all, a little bit about myself, about the beautiful brand and company that I am working for. Then I'll be moving on to um, sharing a little bit about the history of digital within my uh, company. And then moving on on well, how we actually translate the in-store Starbucks experience onto the digital space. But my real purpose here today is to inspire you. And I'm hoping also to give you some key takeaways and learnings that you can maybe implement in your own line of work. So my name is Judith Heine, as Wouter already said, and I am a three years Starbucks partner. So as a company, Starbucks does a lot to make employees feel a lot more than just an employee. And that's why they are called partners. And I'm telling you this because throughout the rest of my story, I'm going to use this term uh, quite a lot. So Starbucks partner. My favorite be beverage is a flat white, half-calf, with origin espresso and soy milk. Yeah, I see some faces here. Oh, that's one of those complicated beverages you can only get at Starbucks. Yeah, that's right. But it's not about complexity. It's all about personalization. We want to make you the perfect beverage, just the way you like it, so that it fits you like a glove. So in my work, I am a marketing manager for Starbucks within EMEA. And that stands for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And I support ge geographic licensees. So those are external business partners that have the right to develop the brand and operate the stores in certain regions or uh, certain markets. So that ranges from all the way to the middle, from the Middle East, where we have 10 markets, down to Turkey, Russia, Norway, Sweden, Central Europe, and basically anything in between. So quite a broad span geographic scope, so I never have a dull moment in my work. Um, at Starbucks, we don't look at managing our customers. No, we rather look at building relationship with them. And what does that mean? How do we interact with them? So we treat them like they're our friends, or we treat them like our most loyal fans. So I'm going to ask you a question. Are there any fans here in this room of Starbucks? Can I see a raise of hands? Oh, that makes me feel good that there's at least a few people. I never know that when I ask this question. Um, then another one. Do you go to Starbucks maybe occasionally because of the free Wi-Fi to do some work? Yeah, another few people. Um, which ones of you are following us on social media? Yeah, a few. Then I'm really interested to hear about this one. Uh, who of you in this room has the Starbucks mobile app? I thought so. Zero. That's because it's not available in the Netherlands, so I'm not surprised. So equally, <laughs> so that's a good thing. Um, who's a member of our loyalty program called My Starbucks Rewards? Also zero. Okay, that's good to know to set the scene. But before I go on, um, I want to share with you the mission statement of our company. And I'm going to read this one out loud. To inspire and nurture the human spirit... One person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. And for us, this is more than just words on a piece of paper. This truly is the philosophy that guides us in our everyday business. This is the filter that we put on every uh, decision that we make. And it's really interesting to see. The first time I, I, I actually uh, heard about this mission statement, it doesn't even contain the word coffee. And that's because we see our role much broader than just serving coffee. And we want to make it very personal, and we want to do it with our full attention. So coffee is not our true DNA. No, our true brand DNA is all about humanity. Once there was a person, and he said it in a, in a different way, and I think it was bang on, and he said, we are not in the coffee business serving people. No. We are in the people business, serving coffee. And I think that's just a beautiful quote. So Starbucks is more than just coffee. Our business is stronger and healthier than ever. Just to throw a few numbers at you. 
We have over 20,000 stores globally. We are operating in 68 countries. And it's really interesting to note that over half of those are within the region that I'm working in. EMEA consists of 36 markets at the moment. We have over 300,000 partners that wear their green apron with pride on a daily basis. And we are serving 70 million customers per week globally. So you can imagine that it's really important and critical to our success how we interact and communicate with our customers. So our mission and guiding principles haven't always been about profit. Or to put in different words, um, profit has driven the organization, but we've always managed it through the lens of humanity. And that's why we are here where we are today. And we've got some recognition for that. Wow, last year or this year we got nominated as number five of the world's most admired companies by Fortune magazine. Wow, that's quite an achievement and we are very proud. But it's more what is behind being uh, one of the most respected or admired companies that we are really proud about. And that's one of the attributes that comes uh, behind it. And that's the reservoir of trust that we build with partners, customers and our stakeholders. So we've spent about 44 years building that trust. And um, that started off in the third place. At Starbucks, we like to talk about the first, second, third, and fourth place. And I'm going to take you through each and every one of those. And as you can see up here, the third place is what I call the center of the Starbucks universe. This is where it always starts, and it will always stay like that. But let me explain you what the other ones mean. So the first place is home, and home is the most important place in your life. This is where you spend your time with your friends and family and your loved ones. So as a brand, we want to be part of your home as well. Whether it's through uh, that pack of whole beans that you uh, purchase in our stores and you take it home, so you get to enjoy that favorite coffee bean in your espresso machine or maybe through French press. Um, we also have single serve offerings, so maybe not everybody knows, but we are selling coffee machines as well, called Verismo. Those are the ones with uh, small pots or capsules. Um, or it's Via, and Via is what we call micro ground coffee, or easier said, instant coffee. You just pour water over it and you can enjoy it everywhere you go. So that's how we are present in the first place. Then I'm moving on to the second place, and that's work or on the go. Well, we spend a lot of time here as well, maybe a little bit more than we'd like to, but let's make it a, <laughs> a positive experience as well. And for a company as Starbucks, this is actually a critical growth par part for the upcoming years. Um, we are present at work through, work, um, through coffee uh, initiatives like vending machines, food service um, and office coffee. But we are expanding here and tapping into new channels. For instance, we are going to the grocery channels, but let's bring it a little bit closer to home. Um, maybe some of you commute from Amsterdam to Utrecht via the A2. You see the petrol station Shell. We've built a beautiful store there. So wherever you go, you can enjoy that favorite beverage also where, whenever you go. So the third place. I already touched upon it. Um, these are our stores, the World's Coffee House. This is really important to us because this is where moments of connections in their most pure form take place. So this is what we take into account whenever activity we are thinking about. We think about the third place first. So trust has been built in a very unique way and not through marketing or advertising. No, really, it's been built through the experiences between a barista and our customers that happen every day in our stores. But it wouldn't be for this one store that we would be where we are today. And that's this one. It's Pike Place in Seattle, the very first store that opened back in 1971. And in fact, today, it's still one of our busiest stores worldwide. So last year, uh, Howard Schultz, who's the founder and originator of uh, Starbucks, 
he heard about this huge line that was uh, stretching down the corner way down the street. And he was wondering, wow, why are people queuing up for this store? What's going on? Why are they taking pictures? What are they talking about? So he, uh, he decided to check it out himself. So he went down there and, um, well, started to talk to people. And the answers to these questions are that it is about the quality of the coffee, but also that people want to get a true sense of what we are all about. So they, are, they wanted to get a connection on a deeper emotional level. And that is what we are all about. So it's one thing to do this in Seattle, in the US, where it all came from. But it's quite another thing to recreate this very experience uh, in other parts of the world. And we are doing that. Whether it's uh, in a new market that we just opened uh, last two weeks ago, Azerbaijan, or maybe as uh, the one that I, uh, I put up here. It's happening, and it's happening everywhere that we are opening up stores. People are craving uh, our experience um, and a sense of the third place that I was already talking about. And I thought, let's give an example a little bit closer to home. This is uh, Rotterdam Central Station. Uh, on the day of opening, we had a huge people uh, <laughs> queuing up in front of the store. So our brand is Transcending Borders. So Starbucks has a unique capability to build customer relationships. Um, and that has always been uh, at the core of, of what we do. I remember my own very first Starbucks experience. And that was uh, when I was doing my internship in Singapore, uh, so during university. And back then I thought, wow, this barista is really into me. You know, that's what you think when you're 20 years old and somebody is, uh, is really uh, nice to you. I had no idea that... Um, the actual connection is one of the uh, key differentiators. I thought they were just all about coffee. So the barista today is still our unique capability. But we are finding that there's a systematic change in consumer uh, behavior. And that's due to this tidal wave of change of uh, technology. The smartphone, social and digital media changes the way we access information. So it's really important for a brand like Starbucks to tap into that, into that. And currently we are seeing that the moments of connections that we have in, in our stores are rivaling the ones that we have uh, in the digital space. And that brings me to the fourth place, and that's the digital space. It's more than just social media channels. So I'm going to take you through what digital actually means for a company like Starbucks and how we transcend that in-store experience onto the digital. But before I do that, this is quite a, a bold statement. By 2020, consumers will manage 85% of their relationships without talking to a human. Wow, that's quite a prediction. And this comes from our uh, consumer insights department in Seattle. And the first time I saw this, I was like, wow, what does this mean to a company like Starbucks? And it is a good question, I think, because unlike many other retailers, we really are not uh, in, the, in the position to shift our business from, click to brick, uh, from brick to click. So the marketplace is mandating that we, that we change. So we have 44 years of experience in building relationships into our stores. Um, so connecting with them one moment and one coffee at a time. But um, only the last six years, and only six years ago, um, we have been able to leverage what's been happening in our stores and transl translate that into the digital space. And how do we do that? What is our strategy? So for us, digital is an extension of what we are doing in stores. So it's not replacing them. We see it as a channel to um, enhance the dialogues that we have in our stores, but also to deepen those relationships. And again, trying to connect on an emotional level. So our strategy is based on five pillars. We want to be a network brand. We want to build meaning meaningful relationships. 
We truly strive to be the best barista online. We amplify existing behaviors and we engage through storytelling. We really try to be a network brand, but what does that mean? And what, how do we do that? So I thought, let me show you what our social ecosystem looks like. And these are all the channels that we currently have available. They are, a few of them are global, but we also have some uh, only locally relevant channels, like you can see the Russian Facebook is up there. But I'm gonna throw a really big number at you. Because every month we have over 375 million impressions. And that's a lot of points of contact we are having. So a network brand, that means 85% of our markets have a Facebook page. 25% of our markets have a Twitter page. 40% of all our markets have an Instagram page. So it's not really about throwing big numbers at you, but it's really more important how you treat them. So after what I've been telling you, this should not come as a surprise. We want to build meaningful relationships. And how do we do that? So six years ago, um, we launched uh, this website called mystarbucksidea.com. This is a website where customers can post IDs on and others can comment on it. And we listen. That's the very important uh, addition I can uh, have here. So in those six years, the ID have actually implemented. So this is not a marketing channel. No, it's really something to have a dialogue. And we are giving our Starbucks customers, uh, they are starting to co-own the Starbucks experience. But in those uh, six years, we have done a lot more than that. We have amassed an unprecedented combination of digital assets. And you can see all of them up here. I think there's no other consumer brand or retailer that has the size, scale, combination and integration of what we are doing in digital. And I want to tell you a little bit about how we got there. So it started with social media. Um, so after we launched my Starbucks idea, we found ourselves leaning into Facebook and Twitter. And then we had about one and a half million fa fans on, uh, on Facebook. And we thought, wow, one and a half million fans, that's a lot. So we thought, let's do them an offer. So we did an offer. We did a free pastry day offer uh, in July 2009. And we found that, o that one million uh, customers participated. But even better, we gained over 500,000 fans in only just two days. So we thought, wow, we're, we are really onto something. Flash forward to today. Today we have 54 million fans globally. That's a big number. So I was like, oh, how can I put this into perspective? What does this mean? Because it's ki kind of hard to grasp. So if you added together the populations of the 10 most populous cities within the European Union, you only arrive at half of this number. So it takes 40, so four zero of the most populous cities within the European Union to come to 54 million. So I thought, wow, that's kind of a big number. But a bigger number is 1 billion. If you take all the friends of our fans, so that's one degree of separation um, where all the engagement occurs, we arrive at 1 billion. 94% of all the people that are on Facebook are in our first degree of separation. Or put in other words, they are friends of our fans. And the same with uh, Twitter. We are having at the moment 3.4 million followers. But more importantly, we are one of the most talked about brands on Twitter. So literally tens of thousands of people are talking about us on a daily basis. 
meet me at Starbucks. I love Starbucks. I need my Starbucks. Well, whatever they're saying, that's, that's critical. And it also reflects the connections that we have about our customers and how important it is to build those uh, um, connections. But everything that we do really uh, rests on our ability to be the best barista online. In fact, what other brand do you know that just could put up a uh, smiley face and get this level of uh, engagement? And I'm not saying today. This happened when we first launched uh, Facebook and Twitter. So, true story, this accidentally got tweeted out, and this is the level of engagement we, uh, we had. And that really spoke for us to the power of, uh, of social media. So, the second pillar is building meaningful relationships. And we, we took that very literally, and we wanted to take that to the next level by really helping people to find a relationship. Last year, just before Valentine's Day, we partnered up with uh, the world's largest dating site, Match.com. So online, um, we put an offer to people to bring in their dates to one of our stores and uh, get a BOGO. That's uh, our Starbucks uh, uh, lingo for saying buy one, get one. So bring in your date and we'll treat her or him to a, to a coffee. But equally, we also offer them a free a month subscription to Match.com. Because if you don't have a date, you need to find one. Um, and this really was uh, quite successfully done. I've put a few numbers uh, up here. But I think the most beautiful part of this, uh, and I, I put in an image here uh, at the bottom, is that this, these moments of connections happened uh, in real life, face-to-face -face in our stores. And the beauty of it was that people had to buy... A a product as well when they were in the store. So it was also commercially uh, very uh, attractive. So be the bar best barista online. Um, so social media is something different than um, a, a set of traditional uh, communication channels. Uh, meaning if you want to send out a targeted message to, to the audience, it won't work, you will fail. So in every market, we have a dedicated community manager. And uh, this community manager is actively engaging with our fans on a daily basis. So I've put up a few uh, examples here. Uh, you see Lizzie. And Lizzie, uh, all she wants is a mocha frappuccino and a billion hugs. So this community manager taps into that conversation and uh, sends a billion hugs. So hug, 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 times 58 million, whatever, just to add up to that number. You know, that adds a smile to someone's face and it gives an uplifting moment. But also, a more serious uh, situation, uh, Amy is celebrating the fact that her mother uh, has beaten cancer and is celebrating that with a, a Starbucks drink. So there again, uh, we give a tap on the shoulder and we add to the brand love. And that's the way we do it. We want to add a human voice also in our social channels. Then leveraging insights. This basically means that we look into uh, what's already happening in our stores and how can we put that into the digital space. I think this is a really nice example because um, people are actually volunteering to um, uh, generate content uh, for, for Starbucks. Uh, we see lots of customers and baristas uh, expressing their artistic skills by drawing on the, on the white paper cup then take a picture and put it online. Well, that's really great. Um, true story, at the moment we are uh, doing an internal uh, cup design contest for our baristas within the EMEA region. So we are asking uh, uh, people to, who are work for working for us to put in a submittal of their design. And the most beautiful one, we will take into production. So next year around summertime, in each and every store, this particular design will be available. Imagine if that would be you. You're working in a store as a barista. You have some uh, artistic skills and you will see them across the entire region. I think that would be amazing if I were the one. I'm not so artistic, so it won't be me. Another example of how we tap into natural uh, behavior. Uh, and based on that insight, we, uh, we started this hashtag called SipFace. Uh, lots of young people like to take selfies 
whilst sipping a frappuccino. So we thought, okay, we can tap into that. And we had a little bit of fun creating these uh, crazy images. So we just put them on our, uh, our channels and this is what we get as a response. Lots of people <laughs> already taking more selfies and then putting them online. So we don't have to ask, it's just happening. And I've put this one uh, in here as well because I think it's important that we look uh, at common uh, behaviors that not only transcend borders, but also transcending uh, different cultures. So this behavior is also uh, visible in uh, the Middle East where you know sometimes we are facing some uh, cultural challenges there. Then the fifth pillar is to engage through storytelling. How many times a day does somebody somewhere in the world say, meet me at Starbucks? Well, that's happening a lot, I can tell you. Um, but this is our insight. Uh, we truly want to facilitate and in inspire face-to-face -face meetings because we believe that uh, the human connection is a force for good. When we are together, we share smiles, uh, we may shed a little tear, but in the end it will all be, uh, be better. That's truly our belief. Good things happen when we get together. So why am, you, am, am I telling you this? Uh, we launched a global campaign last year, and this is how we did that. We sent uh, a few film crews across the world to 28 countries in one day, and we uh, filmed natural situations. So there was no script, there was nothing staged. We just went into the stores and filmed those moments that, uh, that were there. And then we put them on, uh, on our uh, channels, everything that we had available, and we had lots of uh, impressions. So all this bite-sized content that we created, um, yeah, we generated lots of impressions and, uh, and engagement there. And we keep this uh, conversation alive to date. Um, and we try to integrate Meet Me at Starbucks at relevant moments uh, throughout the year. So uh, sometimes we attach it to an offer, but sometimes it's just a brand spark. So now I'm moving on to our own websites and mobile applications. Um, sorry, I need my cheat sheet. Yeah, so besides uh, having our own website, um, in the six years after my MyStarbucksID.com, we did a lot more than that. So we launched free Wi-Fi, and I think you all know that. But also we launched Starbucks Digital Network, which is like our intranet. We've revamped e-commerce, and we launched two different mobile apps and mobile payments. And the traffic that we see to our own websites at the moment is really a 39 million unique visitors per month. Whoa, that's a big number again. So uh, again, I'm trying to put this into uh, scale and into perspective. If you would take um, the traffic of the Wall Street Journal and New York Times together, they have 35 million users. So I'm stating here that we have the traffic and the scale of being our own media company and we have the platforms to tell our stories directly to our customers. And that's just amazing. Maybe you've seen this picture. I, I love this one. Because to me, um, and this was, by the way, taken at the inauguration of Pope Francis uh, a few years ago. And this is just, yeah, it truly demonstrates how much we love our smartphones. But it also demonstrates that we really um, that it's really important for us to tap into these channels. If we want to communicate uh, with our customers, we have to be there where they are. So yeah, the future is now. Um, at Starbucks, we are doing a lot of innovative stuff, and I'm gonna explain to you a little bit more how we integrate our mobile apps, loyalty programs, and how we drive that, uh, how we use those to drive the business. So I'm going to talk to you about the Starbucks plastic cart. 
uh, we launched this about 10 years ago in the US as a gift card program. So yeah, that was quite successful. We brought it to life. But then a few years later, in 2011, we decided to attach a loyalty program to it and launch a mobile app. So we did two things by doing that. Uh, for one, it wasn't just a gift card anymore. But two, it enabled us to also to uh, connect with those customers um, and talking to them. So bringing it closer to home, in EMEA, it's only four years old, but we have about, well, I think over four and a half million uh, members at the moment. And if you don't know what My Starbucks Rewards is about, um, if you go to Starbucks for each and every visit, you get rewarded. So you get to earn free drinks, uh, free modifiers, and it gives us a chance to give you personalized offers. And we're not doing it only um, in our part of the world. This is uh, globally. That's why I put the map up there. So, as I said, the Starbucks card and loyalty program are bundled together. And it gives us a lot of data. It gives us uh, the possibility to customize uh, our communication. On our websites, on our social media, in our advertising... But more importantly, um, it allows us to know more about our customers, but also about the people that are not our customers. And it enables us to change our approach and make it relevant for those we are not reaching at the moment. But we aren't stopping there. Yeah, this picture I took yesterday. Um, my husband and I are living in London, and my husband works in uh, London City, so that's the financial district uh, over there. And for lunch, he goes out and goes to different concepts and outlets. And every concept gives him this hard copy loyalty stamp card. So this is what's really happening. Uh, imagine you have to carry this around in your wallet, and you have these 10 cards. You forget one, you get a new one. Well... That is very inconvenient. So at Starbucks, we thought we can do this uh, differently. We can make it a little bit easier. So I'm here telling you I am very proud because I can give you a scoop. I am holding in my hand, yeah, very old school, and uh, I put it in my bag so it's totally wrinkled, the press release we released today announcing that we have launched in the UK mobile order and pay. Yeah, that's quite... I'm very proud of it. It's very innovative. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but before um, I'm going to talk about it, uh, pictures speak a thousand words. So let's, let me show you this movie. Yeah, so um, very cool uh, stuff, I think. So we used to have a mobile app where you could um, uh, pay in store. You would uh, download the app. You had it on your phone. You shake it to pay it because there would be a, a barcode there and then you just simply scan it. But now, before you even are in our store and you are craving that, uh, that coffee, um, but you don't have a lot of time, you can just pre-order it. You just go onto your phone, you tap onto it, whatever beverage you like, and it will tell you your nearest store, how much time it will take to it to be prepared, and when you arrive at the store, it will be there. And this is only the beginning. We are keeping continually, continually pushing ourselves to be innovative. And I think we are the one and only one in the coffee br industry that is doing this today. So it's giving us really a leading position there. So this brings me to the end of my presentation. And in closing, I, I just want to uh, let me leave with this. So as I said, um, moments of connections are really important to us. 
And uh, even though all this stuff that we are doing is really exciting in the digital space, I really believe it will never replace those face-to-face -face meetings. It really is only an extension. And at Starbucks, we always try to do it from a human uh, perspective. So we will try to only do it that the way that Starbucks can. And that's what I wanted to share with you today.